All right, welcome to our third session. I welcome you all over here once again. I'm Yulman Ansari. Today we're going to talk about the nuances, the clarity that we need to bring out. Because in the last lecture, we talked about a case, it's a small case, given on a micronet broadband, which is Neatel, an internet service provider. Today we're going to talk further about that case and that we'll see that how we can apply the concept of uh, case study methodologies to solve that issue at hand. So with that, let's continue. The first thing that you come across when you analyze a case is about a question that is given at the end of the case. Normally, questions are given. However, that is not always the case. Some of the times, you can see a case study without any question given at the end. However, to make things easier, questions are given. And that gives students a sort of a focused approach on what to focus and how to solve that issue at hand. So, in this slide, if you can see, we talk about how to analyze case. And uh, for that, the first step towards that is understanding a question. First, we have to read the question. You have to understand the questions in the backdrop, in the background of the overall case information given. So that means it's very important, most important rather, to read the case over and over again before actually you read the questions. Then, how to identify areas of focus. Like I said, if your case ends with a couple of questions given at the end, then it's easier for you to identify that area of focus. However, not all the case, uh, cases are, uh, are given or they end um, with a case, case study, basically. So in that case, you have to read between the lines to see how you can come up with the area of focus identification. And the third one is how to break up that question into different segments. So we're going to talk about this a little bit more. Now let's go back to the case lab where the question was given toward the end. And that was taking into account competition in the market. How would you handle this issue in a win-win if you were in the shoes of Mr. Hamid? How would you handle this issue in a win-win way if you were in the shoes of Mr. Hamid, as you remember last time we talked about Mr. Hamid, who was going back to his work after a, uh, a series of uh, meetings, uh, one of that just adjourned. Just uh, me, area manager Sare Bethewe, the over meeting, abhi khatam hui thi, aur uske baad Mr. Hamid was going back to his place of work, uh, recollecting all the points that came under discussion in the, the meeting. And then we see uh, there was this email, uh, a print of email that was uh, placed uh, on his desk. Uh, and uh, we read that email that was from one of the customers facing some issues with the uh, uh, warranty related matter uh, regarding the UPS, which is also installed along with the router. It is one of the services of Neatel, basically to provide uninterrupted power supply uh, to router so that you know uh, power keeps uh, out, uh, going out or coming in so you know the fluctuations taking place all the time so in order to stop that hindrance they normally give a UPS as well just in case you are wondering why is that an internet service provider uh, giving out UPS instead of a router. They provide both actually. So in that background, in that backdrop, in that background of the information given, the case which was uh, a very small case, we can call it a case let, a case let, uh, one page or just, it ended with the question. And the question was seeking your role, seeking your input in um, solving a customer related problem. So before we talk about that, first what we have to do, we have to break that question uh, down into small parts so that we can see what are the specific areas of focus. 
So first area of focus here is uh, that you see uh, in the underlying portion is uh, competition in the market. That you have to uh, shift your focus to uh, the competition in the market. And then uh, it talks about how would you handle this issue. So now the second thing is it seeks your uh, problem solving capability. It seeks your problem solving mechanism to solve that issue at hand. And the third thing is it's a constraint given, which is you have to do it in a win-win way that is acceptable to both parties. That is your company besides the customer whom we cannot underestimate, whom we cannot forget, whom we cannot overlook because customers are the backbone of any business. And then you have to assume all that in the role of Mr. Mohsen Hamid. So this is also very much important. So if you can look below, we can, uh, we can uh, create that uh, in, in a form of an equation. Uh, you can see here solution to the problem uh, and then is followed by an arrow with uh, a little caption over it. Uh, which reads market competition and then is a win-win option for both the customer and the company. So now we have summarized this in a visual form and you can see that you have to arrive at the solution in light of the market competition and the constraint is you have to satisfy both parties, the customer as well as your company because you don't want uh, you don't want to see your company uh, lose uh, anything while uh, uh, making something good for the customer. And that will, send, that will set a precedence for uh, later cases as well. So you want to come up with something that is beneficial, fruitful, and uh, that is quite judicial, quite fair enough uh, for both parties. And here you can see uh, a chart given. It's a courtesy of Tom Kosnick. Uh, he has uh, uh, created this uh, quadrant where you can see on the x-axis are uh, the short-term unknown and the long-term partnerships mentioned that uh, you can expect from your customer. Whereas on the y-axis are mentioned uh, the different types of uh, commitment level that uh, customers uh, might have with the company for its products and services and they are normally categorized into three categories. The lowest one is shallow, usually polygamous, just to give it a sort of a metaphorical meaning and then deeper which is often polygamous and then uh, deepest which is uh, usually monogamous. If you understand the metaphorical uh, connotation mentioned here, it means that uh, uh, it's like a kind of a personal relationship that we have with our better half. So in that sense, they have uh, categorized uh, the customer commitment with the company for its products and services. And here you can see uh, uh, the caption uh, also mentioned along the y-axis, the depth of commitment and exclusivity. So now, you can see here uh, different uh, levels of uh, commitment and li different levels of uh, the expected length of partnership between the company and its customers have been mentioned, namely uh, into uh, six categories. And uh, you can read all here if uh, I start with the short term and uh, you can see here it's, it's a blind date, meaning a single transaction. Right above that is a puppy love, which is cooperative uh, advertising. And then uh, on the topmost is Romeo and Juliet, a uh, one-year exclusive license. And uh, right above the unknown is playing the field, where uh, renewable VAR, value-added uh, value renewables uh, agreement. Um, and then is a serious 
dating, which is uh, R&D partnership, research and development partnership. And then is uh, engagement renewable, which is exclusive terms. And then on the long side is platonic friends, which is a five-year sourcing contract. And right above it is uh, living together, which is a joint venture. And even above that is uh, marriage, which is merger and acquisition, basically. So uh, this uh, quadrant has categorized uh, the uh, relationship into six different categories uh, based on the commitment level as well as the time level. So that gives you some somewhat insight into uh, customer and company related uh, bondage. And you can categorize your different customers uh, in regards to their level of commitment and the length of time of partnership they have with the company. On this slide, we talk about the two ways of dealing with the question. The question that we have talked about earlier on. Uh, one is, one method is called uh, detective approach method. It consists of a discussion which is mostly mm, on application of theory. Normally, a teacher starts that discussion. Teacher uh, gives a background on the theory to be discussed in class, and he or she is the main facilitator during the discussion, meaning it's more like a one way of communication, a teacher uh, with teacher at the driving seat. And uh, it also talks about testing of prediction. Through that theory discussed in class, you actually test the hypothesis. The hypothesis or the prediction and see whether uh, that uh, prediction is valid or not in light of the theory. This is uh, called a deduction method. And uh, put, sim put it simply, we can also call it uh, looking at the bigger picture first and then looking at the smaller picture for, uh, later. First, you look at the environment, external environment, the factors impacting uh, that problem at hand. And then actually you narrow down your focus to the problem itself. So looking at the bigger picture first and then looking at the smaller picture. This is called a detective method. Uh, another way of putting it is uh, you can say looking at the forest first and then looking at the trees later. Because uh, first you look at the bigger picture which is forest and then the trees which is uh, the smaller picture. So basically under deduction method we also test the prediction which is hypotheses and see the theory that we are going to apply. Uh, how accurate those uh, hypotheses or predictions are in light of that theory. Basically, the application of theory helps us validate, verify the, uh, the state of hypotheses, the state of prediction that we have or that we want to actually apply or that we want to prove right or wrong. So this is what is needed uh, when we apply a uh, deductive method, that you must have a conceptual background before, you must have a theory, you must have some uh, uh, research framework before, uh, something that you have looked into before, and you apply, you fit those models uh, into the problem uh, that is given to you. And uh, this is uh, basically, in a nutshell, detective method is. So now, we are going to talk about how we can break down our problem in light of a deductive method. For that, I will backtrack. I will go back to my one of the previous slides and uh, see uh, the question again. Okay, so now I'm at the earlier slide and here I'm going to explain to you how we can apply deductive method. As you know, we have just uh, explained that deductive method is that way uh, that helps you first look at the bigger picture and then at a smaller picture. And the other way you can say you want to first analyze the environment and then see how that problem fits into that environment, thereby identifying the causes and effects. So if we do this, we are going to talk about deductive method by looking at the bigger picture. So the bigger picture is here. 
uh, solution to the problem and the market competition. Solution to the problem is what your task is that you need to achieve and how can you do that? In light of market competition. So that market competition is something that you have to focus on then this is called the bigger picture. And the smaller picture is that you have to uh, go into detail of the nuances, uh, the complexities of the problem given in terms of the detail that was given in the email by the customer. And uh, seek to find out a win-win option for both the customer and the company. So if you allow me, we can say that the market competition is something that you need to first analyze and that market competition is the one that is prevailing in the internet uh, service providers industry uh, particularly to that company's immediate external environment in terms of its uh, competitors those uh, those who are its rivals those who are giving it a direct uh, threat and see how the nature of competition exists in the market before you actually talk about uh, coming up with a solution to satisfy the uh, grievance of the customer. So uh, this is a bigger picture and then this is a smaller picture where you have to come up with a win-win uh, solution. So if you allow me, we can uh, write here cause and effect. cause and effect. By eliminating causes, you can drive down, to, drive down to the main problem. Identify the main problem because a problem might be a result of different causes. And uh, going down to the root cause of the problem would actually help you identify what's the main reason that this problem is occurring, this grievance on the customer end occurring. So that way you can uh, come up with a corrective measure. And that's the first step. So uh, to be uh, in a win-win position, you have to first identify the cause and effect. So in both cases, whether you apply uh, deductive method looking at the bigger picture first and smaller picture later or the vice versa under inductive method where you look at the smaller picture first and the bigger picture later you still have to focus on cause and effect when it comes to this portion. Now we uh, go uh, forward to our earlier slide where we were before coming here uh, deductive approach and uh, here we're going to talk about how we are going to analyze the question under this deductive approach. Here's a worksheet A given and what I'm going to do is come up with a possible approach by uh, applying deductive method. So basically we make two columns. One is named as bigger picture and the other one is named as a smaller picture. So by doing that, we are going to identify the details given in the case uh, under these uh, two uh, categories. So now we draw a line here as well just to differentiate them. Okay, so this is actually the real work I'm going to show you so that you know in actuality how you are going to uh, record the details of the case and jot them down on the piece of paper and uh, how you are actually practically going to do it. If I, if I had shown you all these things um, in an already typed format, then you might not be able to relate to what uh, I had already done. So that's why I'm doing it uh, along with you so that you can see and learn from that. So uh, under the smaller picture, you can write the, all the relevant detail uh, that was given in the case 
about the problem itself, relevant detail about uh, the warranty issue, about the warranty issue basically, and uh, Okay, so, and uh, under bigger picture, you have to do a certain uh, market uh, research, market analysis in terms of uh, the competitors of Nayatel. Who are the competitors of Nayatel? Basically, you are going to do a search on them. First point and the second point might be you have to apply a Porter generic model, which is also commonly known as Porter Five Forces. I hope you are all familiar with that in one of your management related courses. And then you have to uh, in light of that Porter Five Forces, you have to apply a SWOT analysis. And this SWOT analysis has now been improved upon as uh, a little T has been added to it. I will talk about this T later as well. So competitors, how are you going to uh, find the information on competitors. By competitors, I mean um, the rivals of uh, Neatel, what kind of services they are offering, at uh, what prices, their tariff rate, and then you can come up with a uh, good comparison in terms of uh, what's the market uh, in general uh, exists out there. and. Uh, in light of Porter Five Forces, when you apply all those five forces, which include uh, threat of substitute, bargaining power of buyer, bargaining power of seller, barrier to exit, barrier to entry. So these are the ones. Once you have uh, clarified those uh, Porter Five Forces related forces in light of the company and its uh, business challenges, then you would be able to uh, complete your SWOT uh, which would uh, help you identify the internal strengths, uh, internal weaknesses, and external opportunities, and external threats. Because SWAT stands for strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Whereas this little T that has been added uh, by management uh, uh, researchers, and uh, they found out that SWAT was not actually taking into account all relevant uh, factors because uh, in our present times one such factor that has been overlooked for so many years and uh, technology has been one, one such factor. However, this T doesn't stand for technology. It stands for trend. Trend. T-R-E-N-D. -E trend. And uh, technology is one of the trends that um, has changed the nature of competition nature of businesses, how businesses have been conducted uh, before, and uh, they have uh, uh, made uh, existing uh, ways of doing numerous things totally obsolete. They have actually uh, virtually uh, destroyed them. Like you don't see cassettes anymore, you don't see floppy disks anymore. Even about the CDs, the use of CDs is going down day by day. And what about the big size cell phones that we used to have? And what about the big size desktops, computers that we used to have? And now everything is uh, in a smartphone, you know? So basically technology has uh, unleashed a new trend that has uh, made lots of businesses uh, d disappear, actually. You know, you don't, you get to see the typewriter anymore because that is about the trend. And trend also talks about uh, some demographic trends or anything else like that. 
Demographic trends, if I talk about, then I would talk about the decline in population that is taking place all over the Europe, um, as well as in Japan. And as a result, that has some threat to uh, their fashion brands out there because their youth is aging. Unka youth is hota ja And as a result, the, uh, the prospects for those foreign brands to sell their products to their target market is actually declining. So this is also something that uh, you need to cover under trend. So in order to understand this tool, uh, SWOT analysis, when we talk about trend, we talk about something uh, that does not pose a direct threat to your business. However, indirectly, the threat is quite as relevant as anything else. And uh, by looking into account um, that factor, you can see how, uh, how it's going to affect your future prospects of running your business success successfully and uh, how you can come up with uh, risk mitigation strategies. So that's why this is very important to do external analysis. So in the case of, now coming back to the case, in the case of Nayatel, so you first have to analyze oh, in which kind of market it, it exists and what are the nature of competition in there in terms of market forces, in terms of competitive forces, in terms of threat of a substitute, in terms of the bargaining power of the um, customer, which is your buyer, those who are your internet users, and what other bargaining power that you can uh, have and that you can use or that you can utilize. Uh, for the benefit of your company's long-term sustain sustenance. So these are the things that you need to look into. And uh, to, uh, to put it all in just uh, a nutshell, I would say, uh, external environment analysis talks about getting the broader picture of how your business exists and operates before actually you deal with the problem. Because in light of that external environment, the solution that we suggest, chances are more likely that that solution is going to be as much relevant. Uh, so that's why we talk about uh, external environment. So that is a bigger picture, and we have mentioned here competitors, four or five forces. And in light of four or five forces, you have to um, do your SWOT analysis, uh, where you talk about uh, strand weaknesses opportunities and threats and then in a smaller picture uh, you are going to write down all the detail that is given in the case pertaining um, the user grievance ke uski shikayat kya thi, what was the user complaint and all that relevant detail about the warrant issue jo ke uski major complaint thi. Achha ji, itna ho gaya? so now basically you have to uh, once you ha you have uh, noted down all these factors and then you have to carry out an internet search because there are certain things uh, which might not be uh, readily available to you so for that you have to do a good internet search to find out the information on um, Nayatel's competitors, their competitive pricing, their competitive offering, and the nature of the market forces that exist there, and see uh, how you can understand the whole uh, market competition. This is the external factors ko analysis. Karne ka. uh, the analysis of the external environment helps you understand, helps you create a realistic picture about how things are out there. Uske baad, aapne Porter 5 forces ko study karna hai, then you have to apply those Porter 5 forces, uh, Porter 5 forces uh, to uh, Nayatel's business uh, in terms of uh, nature of the competition that is defined under five different forces that Michael Porter has uh, defined in terms of bargaining power. Aapki as a internet service provider, kya bargaining power hai? And what are the bargaining powers of your uh, customer, your target market? And then you talk about barrier to exit, uh, barrier to exit and barrier to entry. Kya aapki industry mein aapki competitors ka ana asaan hai? Kya isme investment ke lihaas se, if I want to be like an internet service provider, would I, would I want to spend uh, uh, less money or more, more money to be your competitor? Uh, for example, there are companies where in order to be a competitor, it's not that easy. For example, you cannot be uh, a airplane manufacturing company 
quite easily. Uske liye bahut zyada investment ki zarurat hai. So in that extreme case, the barrier to entry is quite high. Acha, barrier to exit. Ke ji, kya ye business agar nahi chal raha, so you, can you just uh, wrap it up overnight and leave? If you have made so much investment that it's very difficult for you to leave. So barrier to exit, bhi jo hai, sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's not that higher. So it just depends on the nature of the business in terms of the investment, in terms of the stakes that you have got. So ye is tarah uske analyze karenge. And then uh, threat of the substitute. What do you think about the future in terms of technology's impact on uh, the internet? Yes, Ashkel jo hai, because of 3G and 4G technology, uh, and the internet uh, feature found in majority of the smartphones um, has enabled um, users to use internet directly without any any service. Uh, and the telecom operators have become the s internet service providers as well. So this is the threat of the substitute basically, which you can see in the market. Mein. Relevant detail ki baat karte hai under small picture. Aap here you will go back to the case and you will, um, because you have already jotted down all the relevant information there. And uh, I don't think that would be a big problem for you to actually understand those issues. Kyunki usme usari cheez hai already given in the case. Jisme jo that detail actually will help you analyze ki is problem ke piche cause kya hai. Because the uh, main thing that you have to do is to identify cause. Okay, why did it happen? And for that, we use a concept. We call it asking five whys. What do we Asking five whys. We call it asking five whys. If I put a line here, because now you are talking about Because now you are talking about something. Uh, about how to identify cause and effects. Or cause and effects to identify karne ke liye hum kya use karte We talk about asking five whys. Five whys. Ye five whys kya hote basically? So how do we identify a cause for a particular problem? For that, we apply a tool developed by a Japanese quality expert, and he named that tool in English. It is asking five whys. And what are these five whys? These five whys actually are a series of interrelated questions that helps you narrow down to the main root cause of the problem. By asking those interrelated series of five questions, or so, that, that is not to say that 5 is the fixed limit. It's not a fixed number. It could be more or less. But 5 questions uh, are more likely to give you a holistic approach of uh, identifying the cause for a particular problem. So for that, when we ask those 5 interrelated questions, we can narrow down to the root cause of the problem. So those are the what might be the real or root cause of the problem. So, asking five whys developed by that Japanese quality expert is a tool that we can use to solving, uh, is a tool that we can use actually to identify the cause and effect and see how better we can come up with a solution to satisfy customer. So if you go back to uh, the case and recall its uh, detail given in terms of um, the reason why the customer was unhappy. So we would find the main reason was that there was no warranty card, there was no warranty card that was given to the customer in the beginning when the UPS was installed. And then what happened was the UPS got burned. So these are the two uh, starting points for you to apply f asking five whys. So the first question might be 
why was the warranty card not issued to the customer at the beginning of the service when the UPS was installed and the second question might be which is now the logical uh, progression of the first question and uh, logically linked to the first question that who was responsible for giving the warranty card to the customer and the third question might be why did he not give the card and that question you can expand it a bit more in terms of what was the reason he did not carry a warranty card with him while visiting uh, the facility of the customer while he is at the customer's place why did he not carry the warranty card with him before leaving his office and the fourth question might be which is now uh, more related to the office and procedures and those procedural matters which may involve other um, top management uh, in terms of those who are specifically responsible for dealing with warranty related matters and dealing with such uh, documentations. So why didn't they put that in the SOP which is a standing operating procedure? So that might be a fifth question. So over there you can identify and go back to the root cause of the problem that where lies the real mistake? Where lies the real error? Where lies the real root cause of the problem? So that's how you can apply the five whys. And from there you can identify and pinpoint it. That is the main reason because if this reason is still uh, still remain uh, untouched and uh, then uh, you cannot uh, ensure in the future to uh, to to have these kind of issues uh, not taking place and uh, in order to keep those or prevent those issues from surfacing in the future you have to identify the reason why it happened and from there you can take uh, a disciplinary action from there you can suggest how you can correct that measure and see how it would impact future dealings with the customers by identifying that cause you now what you do you now uh, isolate that cause and look into the detail of that cause in uh, in terms of other related factors uh, within your organization and from there you can come up with a logical uh, explanation for why this uh, event occurred so that's uh, that how we can apply the five whys and see how better we can come up with a good win-win situation after analyzing causes now you are going to uh, talk about or see how those causes might have the ramifications or the repercussions on the effects. So now we talk about the effects. The first effect is that customer becomes unhappy. Customer becomes quite uh, worried or cautious about the credibility about the credibility of the organization in terms of dealing with the uh, customers and living up to their commitment that they have uh, made to uh, the, the through the services they provide and giving them assurances that if something goes wrong they can um, correct it they would uh, make that good for customers and they would uh, ensure that the customer rights are duly taken care of for that the uh, effect portion 
you cannot avoid losing a customer and for that even if you have to look across a uh, multidisciplinary approach wise then you should do and here uh, you can borrow the concepts from CRM customer relationship management and uh, in customer relationship management the concept of customer satisfaction is very very important and the whole organization's operations are built around achieving the maximum customer satisfaction and when something happens out of control that is also called force majeure beyond your control so how to deal with that issue meaning crisis management how can you do that for that uh, in CRM customer relationship management three R's are mostly talked about three R's the first R stands for regret that you must apologize to the customer the second R stands for uh, reason that you must give the reason and should be the genuine reason you must accept your mistake and you must uh, justify why it happened obviously the burden of acceptance is on your part because it's your mistake so you must give the reason why the problem occurred deliberately or indele indeliberately and the third one is uh, reward how can you make customer happy in exchange for that whatever happened to the customer what else can you do in a good way to uh, make amends for that to uh, negate the effect of that by doing something extra for the customer which is called reward and you when you apply this model of three R's then you can see how better you can come up with uh, different options uh, in terms of uh, uh, reaching a win-win settlement between the customer and your company so in light of three R's you can come up with different options of satisfying a customer option A option B option C or as the case may be or as many options that you may think of and then you can debate on them in terms of their effect in achieving that objective that the customer remains satisfied remains happy and without leaving your company services because the word of mouth is something which is very terrible for any service providing company because that customer who is unhappy might go around telling lots of other potential or existing customers and as a result he or she would end up breaking away lots of customers from you and uh, in the market a poor image would appear about the service of your company so that's why it is very important that you deliberate on the options available in light of 3R to come up with something that is uh, most uh, important and most relevant to uh, satisfying the needs of the uh, to satisfying the needs of the customer this is really important so with that we have uh, just covered uh, the deductive method of uh, solving a case study now here are some important links that I would like you to check and see uh, the relevant models in light of uh, looking at the bigger picture and then looking at the smaller picture the first link uh, the first link uh, talks to you about strategies for a positive corporate culture the second link uh, talks to you about market development strategy how to analyze your external environment and what are the checklists involved in that so that is really important when you analyze any external environment 
So these are the tools which are given. Uh, they come in handy to uh, create a market development strategy. So knowing these tools would help you better understand and uh, observe uh, when analyzing the external environment. And the third one is uh, it's related to the financial part of that. Uh, we have already shown that link in our last session, which is KF Knowledge Bank. Over there, you can go and see how you can use some finance, uh, some finance related tools which uh, can help you with your financial analysis or the related information uh, given in the case. And the fourth one is about uh, strategy into action. That how can you put uh, strategy uh, to work? This is really important when it comes to strategy formulation, when it talks about corporate strategy, competitive market strategy, and so on. Because uh, in case studies, remember this thing, and this is really important, that when we talk about uh, business-related case studies, they talk about numerous aspects of a problem which might be related to marketing as well as finance, as well as HR, as well as your uh, corporate strategy, as well as your supply chain, as well as your branding strategies, as well as your uh, product development strategies, uh, accounting procedures and practices, and so on. So there's hardly a case that one can say is totally confined to one area of uh, research or one area of expertise because it's just like a genuine real business problem that we talk about, a real business uh, issue that we talk about. So uh, whether you are majoring in finance, HR, or marketing, or in any other field, it is always helpful that you come up with uh, a better analysis by using these tools which are multidisciplinary, meaning covering all different areas. And the knowledge of these tools and the knowledge of those different areas uh, matters a lot for a significant um, analysis of a case because that really makes the, the analysis of your uh, case the strategy that you recommend, more uh, meaty, substantial, uh, more, they make them more logical and uh, more forceful and convincing. So that is very important that you should have the prior knowledge of all these relevant fields. If not, then you can visit these links and you ha can have a quick quick grasp of these tools, these methodologies, and these concepts. So just, I just thought to share these links with you. And there are numerous other links as well. So uh, you got to be a good uh, internet searcher uh, so that you can find relevant information uh, helping you with the analysis. On this slide, I'm going to share a link with you uh, which is uh, an online website that contains lots of case studies and uh, over there you can practice uh, solving a case by deductive method which is looking at the bigger picture first and then a smaller picture later. And this is the website metapraxis.com. You can go to that website and practice a couple of cases and uh, I can do one or two with you, so let's talk about it. All right, here's the website that opens through that link. And these are the business uh, analysis case studies. Uh, you can see here a couple of case studies given, which you can read, and then you can apply a uh, deductive method of uh, solving or analyzing different cases. Uh, let me see which one you would like to uh, uh, read with me. I think uh, we'll go with the second one here. CSR is a pioneering designer and developer of uh, silicon and software 
for the customer electronics market and is at the forefront of developing semiconductors and software for a host of world leading technology platforms and standards including Bluetooth, GPS and other location technologies, FM radio, Wi-Fi, near field communication and numerous others. The group employs over 2,000 people in uh, 30 offices throughout Europe, USA, Asia. It continues further. Uh, a new page is opening. Throughout Europe and USA and Asia with the revenues of uh, 845 million pounds in 2011 and is a constituent of the FTSE 250 index which is actually Financial Times uh, stock exchange uh, index. Uh, challenge delivering insight to the board. CSR operates in a fast moving consumer based market where speed of decision making and action can be critical. So now here the brief overview is uh, being given on that company which is C CSR. CSR is continually looking for ways to improve the timeliness and quality of its financial and business analysis, particularly ways to increase levels of automation, thereby shifting the focus from preparation and delivery of data to the provision of more insightful analysis, which in turn can facilitate timely decision making, a quick process approach they are seeking for timely decision making. CSR had a wealth of data, but existing reporting uh, was often time consuming and labor intensive to produce. Now here they are talking about the real business challenge or the problem at hand, putting great pressure on an overstretched finance department. As a result, finance department is overworked. As a result, the existing reporting was often a document of record rather than a document of action. So what is formality ka kaam ho rahe? or uska koi practical output nahi nikal raha kyunki wo is just like a filing work file work is taking place not just uh, about something that you can act on so project kiya tha isme the matter practices work with members of the CSR group finance team to identify the key business questions that needed addressing ab yahan pe jo company matter practices hai they are telling about themselves how they went out and solved that business problem for the company called CSR. Data sources were identified and rapidly integrated into a business analysis database linked to an interactive analysis dashboard. Now, these are complicated terms are business related. So you must uh, have a good understanding of these things because uh, in business field, uh, when it comes to different cases, their analysis, familiarity with these concepts are already assumed by your teacher that you must develop. If you don't have any idea, then you must use the internet, search there and find out the different meanings of these uh, technical terms, jargons and so on. Production of a redesigned board pack was automated within two months. A scenario planning tool was then developed to enable easy evaluation of investment decisions and this was used in the long range planning process within four months of the initial project kickoff. So basically they are talking about how they came up with a solution to that problem. Or for that if you see they, they said they worked with the members of the CSR group finance team to identify the key business questions that needed addressing about cause and effect have to apply the five whys okay this is what they did actually then data sources were identified from where data is coming they track track it down back to the source of the origin from where data was coming and rapidly integrated into a business analysis database linked to an interactive analysis dashboard dashboard is basically something that you look uh, 
inside the car. You can see in the car, you can see over there, uh, red indicators are telling you about the present state of the car. And uh, f based on that dis uh, information, you can decide whether you can take uh, your car on a long drive or not. Likewise, the real-time information is displayed on a screen, which is called a dashboard in any company regarding its production, its operations, its finance, its uh, market research. All those uh, key indicators are flashed on the screen for uh, the management to take uh, um, ready actions in terms of identifying any problems or uh, make quicker decisions on uh, about the future undertakings of the, on the future projects or uh, to identify if there is any problem that needs correction. So production of a redesigned board pack was automated within two months. Unhane product banai jisko unhane automate kar diya two months mein. A scenario planning tool was then developed to enable easy evaluation of investment decisions and they came up with a tool that uh, helped the company with its investment decisions. Uh, scenario planning basically is like a what if analysis tool. It talks about uh, plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, plan E, plan F. Okay. What can go wrong? What can be the options available out there? What if this doesn't work? What if that doesn't work? Then what would you do? You know, it com comes up with a different combination of series of uh, expected occurrences. This is what in scenario planning. It helps with the uh, in advance preparation for any unexpected occurrence or any unexpected outcome. This may you lessen your risk. Lesson down karte you mitigate your risk. A scenario planning tool was then developed to enable easy evaluation of investment decisions. And this was used in the long range planning process within four months of the initial project kickoff. Now, they have identified cause and effect based on that they identified the real cause and based on that they came up with a solution. They developed a new product and uh, that product would help the top management with their uh, quick decision making regarding investments. And that product was uh, operational within two months of time. As a result, what was the benefit of that? Uh, delivery of insightful reporting and analysis to the board has been accelerated, who accelerate ho gaya and transformed, enabling uh, improved and more focused inputs for strategy making, including real-time trend and scenario evaluation. So, say kya a real-time business environment mein jo indicators aapko real-time mein aapko inform kar rahe hain about your uh, sales your orders, uh, the prices of different uh, inputs, uh, your uh, capacity planning, your production planning, your procurement policies in terms of your supplier's lead time, ki how much time uh, would they take to supply a particular component to you and all that. So, these are all things that Aapko software ke through jo hai process karke different scenarios and uh, their evaluation making it easier for you. The time taken for the finance time to produce management and board reports has significantly reduced and the quality and insightfulness of these reports has significantly improved. Preparation time kam ho gaya aur jo quality hai for decision making wo increase ho gayi. Isolating the key messages and presenting the likely future performance scenarios clearly. Now you can have the visibility throughout the complexity of your business, both internal as well as your external environment, and you, without losing the visibility of those key indicators, you can come up with a decision that is more effective uh, dealing with all different related information which is presented to you in the shortest possible time. Or we real time me aapko provide kar rahe with different uh, key indicators uh, in different scenarios. So, say aapko apni uh, risk mitigation may bhi asani ho jayegi. 
When the business restructured following the acquisition of Zoran, उन्होंने एक small company को खरीदा, उसका नाम है Zoran. Reporting structures were quickly adapted in uh, in order to maintain the historical context. And as a result, उन्होंने क्या किया? जो उस कंपनी के जो प्रोसीजर्स थे उन्होंने उसको भी जो है अपने एडजस्टमेंट के साथ इनकॉर्पोरेट कर लिया सो दैट दे आल्सो बिकम पार्ट ऑफ देयर एग्जिस्टिंग प्रोसेस सो दिस इज जस्ट वन केस स्टडी रियल टाइम केस स्टडी आई वांटेड टू शेयर विद यू वेयर इट टॉक्ड अबाउट हाउ दिस बिग पिक्चर एंड लुकिंग एट द स्मॉलर पिक्चर कॉन्सेप्ट कुड बी कंसिडर्ड एंड they came up with a product which was an answer to their business challenges and those business challenges were all covered uh, under a bigger picture so this is uh, just a one uh, example i shared with you regarding uh, the case study analysis with this uh, we come to the recap of today's session we talked about how to analyze case study questions by breaking them up into different uh, segments and then uh, we talked about deductive method how we look at uh, bigger picture first and what are the key things that uh, we need to consider in terms of uh, market competition and how that market competition is affected uh, which can be covered through two tools we uh, talked about one is porter five forces and the other one is swot analysis and then uh, the last thing that we just talked about was uh, how can we uh, apply deductive method so for that we actually took a real case we went to a website and over there we analyzed how that company came up with a solution to a problem of uh, to the problem of uh, one of their clients and that uh, they did and uh, were there we were able to identify the uh, the uh, the process of deductive method applied there with that uh, i conclude uh, today's uh, session um, and i hope uh, we look forward to seeing you again thank you very much